Our first reading this morning is from Paul's letter to the Philippians, in which Paul writes to the church in Philippi to encourage them to pray constantly for one another. He asks them to pray even when they feel anger and resentment and fear. Now, Paul wrote this letter to his friends in Philippi from a jail cell in Rome. I'm sure that sitting there day after day with nothing to do but think about what had landed him there and his anger towards the people who had tried and convicted him, I'm sure it all felt so overwhelming at times. I know that when I feel overwhelmed by my own anger or my own depression or frustration or resentment, at those times I feel pretty distant from God. And sometimes I find it really hard to go to God in prayer. In this letter, Paul says that what kept him going, what kept him out of that place of despair, was remembering the good people who were praying for him and who were working for good in the world in this little church in Philippi, a congregation that he loved. He was able to pray and feel closer to God when he thought of all of those wonderful people in the church in Philippi who loved Christ. And it seems to have given Paul the strength to make it through another day. He says, I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. And this is my prayer that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best, so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. As many of you already know, one of my favorite parts of ministry in Malawi was my weekly Bible study at Chichiri Prison. It was only a 10 minute drive from my house, but in many ways I left one world and entered another. It really helps me understand Paul's letter to the Philippians because I am on the recipient side of the letter. I saw and heard and felt that letter every Tuesday morning during my time in Malawi. The men at the Bible study, they were my Paul. And I was, or rather, I represented the church in Philippi to them. I'm guessing that the conditions in Paul's prison was not much better than those in Malawi. Chichiri Prison was only a short drive from the Blantyre Mission where we lived and is almost right next door to the main mall or plaza in Blantyre. When I would arrive on Tuesday mornings, this is the scene I was always greeted by. I would drive up to the main gates, large green steel gates, and I would tap my horn, and a guard would come to the gate and open the little port or crack open the gates a little bit and look out to see who it was. And then they would decide whether or not to admit me that day. I would then drive in when they opened the gates. I would park my Land Cruiser in the small parking lot and then proceed into the receiving area where when it was my turn, they would look into my bag to make sure that I wasn't carrying any contraband. And then they would open the gate and admit me into the prison itself where some of the men from the Bible study would be waiting to accompany me to the chapel. This is a picture of many of the men from the Bible study standing inside the walls of the new chapel just before it was finished. They had gathered there that day to receive new Bibles donated through a memorial fund in the Church of Scotland. The chapel, which is pictured here, is under construction and was designed by one of the inmates and was financed by the Presbyterian Church in Canada and was actually one of the final projects that I pushed through before leaving Malawi. It has now been completed and it replaces a chapel which previously was made of tree limbs for the structure and then essentially large sheets of plastic for the roof and half walls. Chichiri Prison was built to accommodate about eight or 900 prisoners, and yet when I was there, it held on average of 1,700 to 1,900. So overcrowding was a huge problem, which then also leads to the transmission of disease. 
tuberculosis, flu, other infectious diseases, and I understand that it has been particularly bad during COVID. Chichiri has four large cell blocks in which most of the inmates sleep. They, they don't have individual cells, they just have these four large cell blocks. And so each evening they are locked into one of these cell blocks and they stay there up to 14 hours a day, depending on the number of guards that are staffing the prison and what else is happening that day. They lie jammed in there. They lie literally sleeping on top of each other. Prisoners are fed one meal per day. And for the last few years, that meal consisted of only encima, which is a thick corn porridge made with water, salt, oil, and ground corn. While encima is the staple food in Malawi, it is usually served with a relish or a side dish consisting of cooked greens, some beans, sometimes some fish or chicken or goat. But as you can see from this picture from the kitchens, the inmates only get encima once a day and are only fed beans once per week. As you might guess, this type of meager diet leads to fights in the food line leads to severe malnutrition and what amounts to a, self, a starvation diet, as inmates who solely depend on prison-issued food slowly starve to death. There's just not enough calories. And this diet, when it's combined with the overcrowding, makes for the perfect conditions for disease outbreaks. Inmates depend on family and friends on the outside to provide them with additional food, clothing, and toiletries. Now, inmates in Chichiri are in prison for crimes ranging from petty theft to murder, and they're all mixed together. And in addition, there are people there in prison who haven't even been convicted yet, but they are simply there awaiting a trial date. Some of them are there for up to two years before they go to trial, and then at trial they're found not guilty, and released after spending two years in this prison. And even those found guilty, they are often there simply because they were trying to feed their families and had no money to pay for a lawyer or a bribe. There are relatively few wealthy people in prison in Malawi. Given these conditions, and given the unfairness of many of their sentences, given the fact that some of them have not even had a trial yet, you would expect that Chichiri would be filled with men who were filled themselves with anger and bitterness and resentment. And I'm not denying that some of them were, but I did not meet very many of them at the Bible study. On the whole, the inmates who attended the weekly Bible study were men of deep faith who had somehow overcome their anger, bitterness, and resentment. I think often of the men I met at Chichiri Prison. I think of their grace and their hospitality, of their thankfulness for family and friends, and, and even for me, but most especially their thankfulness for God their sense of peace. Our gospel reading from Luke introduces us once again to John the Baptist, whose job it was to prepare the way for Christ, to prepare the hearts and minds of those who heard him for the coming of the Lord. Luke has John the Baptist quoting from Isaiah 40, and in many ways these words epitomize the work that John was doing and the work that we need to do so that we too can welcome Christ into our lives and our hearts. Prepare the way of the Lord and make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. I'm not sure at what point peace comes into our hearts and I guess it's different for every single one of us. And I'm not sure when Paul found it, but he certainly had it in his jail cell when he wrote this letter to the church in Philippi. Our struggle to find peace, peace with ourselves and peace with the world is kind of like being in jail. 
We are imprisoned by our own lack of grace, our own forgiveness. We are imprisoned by our bitterness and our anger. We are imprisoned by our lack of love, whether it is expressed or whether it is felt. And the bars and the walls of our prisons, while they may not be physical, they can be just as real. Whenever I'm having trouble finding peace in my life, when anger and bitterness and resentment are threatening to overwhelm me, I think of the peace I found in the many men I met at Chichiri. The men there at Chichiri prison, they had their own choir. And they recorded a CD which helped raise funds for the building of the chapel and for the well-being of inmates. One of the tracks on their CD was Joy to the World. And listening to it reminds me of the peace that is possible, even in the midst of some of the worst conditions imaginable. Joy to the world, the Lord is God. Let every seed the King. Joy to the world, the Lord is God. Let every seed the King. Let like Paul and the inmates at Chichiri in the Bible study. One of the ways that we find our peace, one of the ways that we release ourselves from our own bondage of suffering, of anger, of bitterness, of resentment, is by seeing Christ's saving, saving work in the life of others. Who is our Philippian church? Who brings us hope in our prison cells? We started Advent with fear and hope, and today we struggle with peace. Next Sunday, we will continue our Advent journey as we learn more about joy and as we continue to prepare ourselves for the coming of Christ. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. Friends, this morning we gather to celebrate at Christ's table. And a voice cries out in the wilderness to prepare the way of the Lord, to make straight in the desert a highway for our God, where every mountain, where every valley rather shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill made low, where the uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. For it is here at this table that God reveals himself to us. It is here at this table that we prepare the way of the Lord. It is here at this table that the desert of our lives can become a highway for God. Friends, you are invited to this table for this is a joyful feast for the people of God. And they will come from the east and the west and from the north and the south and they will sit at this table in the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be filled. Come and eat. Our communion hymn, number 560, Put Peace into Each Other's Hands, sung by Mary Ann McVicker. 